Hi, my name is uh, George Dagnino. I'm the editor of the Peter Dac Portfolio since 1977. Uh, what I would like to do with this uh, short video is to discuss a few indicators that I use to measure market risk. Why do we need uh, to measure market risk? Well, because unfortunately the market doesn't go in a straight line. Uh, as I mentioned in other videos, the market could go from 1968 to 1982 be flat, from 1999 to 2012, almost 2013, basically flat. And then, of course, only from 1982 to 1999, the market went up. So we need to measure market risk. Why? Because in between the strong moves, you can have strong declines, very sharp declines, very sharp declines. So how do you measure the, the fact that the, the market may be ready for a rest? This is the following is just a few simple indicators. This is the chart of the S&P 500 going from 2010 to the end of 2012. And as you can see, the market goes through some pretty wild fluctuations and tends to move over the long term uh, within a well-established channel. Now, is there any way we can understand if the market has reached a period of rest? Well, drawing a channel of this type is always a, a good tool. For instance, if you connect this point and this point, and then you draw the line, and then you do a parallel line to that, it tells you how, if the market is getting a little uh, frothier or not. Clearly, this was the case here, and this was a case around September, October 2012. Some people use... Uh, this uh, chart, which is the presidential cycle, to uh, uh, to understand what is, or at least to try to predict what is the potential of the market, and it's an interesting thing because you know right after the the election, the market, on average, went up 86.1 percent in the years following an election. The midterm 187. Clearly, the third year is the most bullish year. For, for the market, then just prior to the election is not as bullish. So depending on where you are, there is a, a way of measuring the degree of bullishness. Another way of uh, measuring risk for the market, which is uh, actually works very, very well, is uh, the market seasonality. The market tends to grow from January into May okay then from may until september october it doesn't do much then around october start rising all over again uh, one of the things by the way that i have uh, discovered that if the market uh, what i do I, I i keep track of the average growth uh, in previous bull market and if the average growth of the market is uh, is in the first few months is below the average growth, then the chances are the market is not going to do much for the rest of the year. So this is another chart that I follow quite closely. But anyway, this, this is an important chart because had you invested since 1950, only in this period from May to September, you would have made absolutely no money. All the gain comes from investing your money from January to May and then from around October, November to January or, or actually to, back to May. So this is a very important chart to keep in mind. Does it follow every year? Absolutely not. But more often than not, this is the pattern that people should be aware. This is an interesting indicator. When I first uh, was exposed to, and this was from a, an analyst uh, a strategist from Schwab, I sort of I had a lukewarm reaction. But uh, the more I think about it, the more... It, it might might be very valuable. And what it is, it shows two graphs. One is the S&P 500, okay? And the, the red line is the HMI, the housing market index that shows the bullishness or the optimism of uh, real, estate in, uh, real estate operators. And when they become 
more cautious about the housing market is a telltale that says, well, the market, maybe economic conditions are not that strong because housing is the first sector of the economy to weaken and therefore the profits are not going to be profitable. So it's a good leading indicator. The problem is that could be could lead by one or two, even three years in this case. Here it led by one or two months. But the bottom line is if this indicator keeps on going up, chances are the stock market will go up. The time to to start worrying about is when this the HMI declines for more than a year. Another indicator is uh, that is closely related to the stock market is the unemployment claims. Uh, this is the, the f which is the blue line and is the four week moving average. And the interpretation is, is fairly simple. If the, the unemployment claims decline, that means the economy is strong, earnings are growing, and the stock market rises. But when the unemployment claims are going up, that means the economy is slowing down and therefore earnings and profits are likely to be lacklusters and therefore the the stock market will respond by going down here claims started going down meaning the economy started picking up and the stock market sure followed through so the bottom line is you know if you see the unemployment claims declining or even staying a little stable that means the market the odds are is going to rise rather than decline but the time to worry about is when the economy slows down and this is you can see the unemployment claims start rising that means that risk is high and the market will probably remain weak until unemployment claims start declining again this is a very important indicator that we have developed and we call it financial risk and uh, this is a proprietary indicator that uh, we we have developed by analyzing many financial data. But the, the bottom line is that when the financial risk declines, then the market, the odds are it's going up. The time to worry is when financial risk rises and then because then the economy is going to slow down, profits are going to suffer, and the stock market is weak. This was a period when the, the, the financial risk was rising, but at this point started going down and the market responded accordingly. Here financial risk rose and the market corrected. Here financial risk went down and the market went up. So this is an important indicator that we follow at Peter DAC in the Peter DAC portfolio in each issue. There are other simple tools that can be used to understand if the market is ready to pause or not. One of the things that I like is, is, the, is a trend line that for, uh, goes through two or three points, four points. And then if the trend line covers one, two, three, four months, that is an important trend line. If the market breaks a trend line last, lasting uh, covering three to four months is an important violation of the trend. It means that the market is going to pause for several, several weeks. Uh, as I mentioned before, another way could be to draw a parallel line uh, to, to this trend line. And, and every time the market uh, obviously, you could not draw it at this point, but somehow at, at this point you could. And then if it is parallel and it touches this, this, at this level, the S&P 500 touches the, the, the trend line, then you know that roughly you could, you could expect some type of pause. If then it breaks below this trend line, then the, there is the, the, the break could be even more serious. Again, these are all tools to understand if the market is ready to pause or not. Another indicator is the VIX, so the volatility of the market. And as you can see, the VIX usually, uh, when the VIX declines, okay, it, then the volatility declines means that there, there is more confidence in, uh, in what is happening in the stock market and in the financial markets, and the market tends to go up. Uh, when instead volatility start rising, then as you can see, the stock market pauses, declines until volatility declines again. Here, volatility started rising and the market, as you can see here, it started corrects. Here, the volatility started declining and the stock market went up. 
Now, one, one level for volatility, uh, when volatility is around anywhere but between uh, around 19, this is a moving average, by the way, but it's when it's close around 19, it, it's okay. The problem is when it starts moving much higher than 18, then you know a correction is very likely, and what you see is not a pause, it's going to be a correction. So when the, the, the volatility is low, is okay. When the volatility is declining, risk is declining, but be careful when volatility is rising, especially above the 1920 level. As I said before, the uh, trend lines are very useful and uh, there are several tools that I, I use and they, they help me understand if the market is overextended or not. In this case is a very uh, a very short uh, trend line which covers only three four months so I know that this is probably going to be a very minor correction lasting several weeks but not a major one. Uh, the, the, an important trend line is this one. If by any chance, and this is one uh, sort of a support that I keep in my mind, is that the, the real danger level, if the market would go down this trend line, which covers you know um, a year, then this would be a very severe breakdown and the market could be, really take a real beating. Other things that I follow is, is, for instance, levels. This is clearly a nice support level. So if the market declines, this would be an important support level that you would expect the market not to to go below it. Another way of looking at trend line and support, as you can see here, what I mean by a trend line that's spanning almost uh, you know almost a year. When uh, gold broke this trend line, that meant that the, the violation was a serious one. So there was a major trend in in uh, in in the in the price of gold and in fact for a year gold did not do anything then what you have is here is a support that you tie all these points together these two points together and what you get is a range so really at this point when you know that when the market touches this line the odds are is going to correct how far down at the worst around this level this could be a buy point how would you decide if this when the, the, the price of gold goes down here and and uh, and is a buy well volume is an important tool when there is high volume after a, a, a period of weakness uh, like here for instance then it means that the market uh, the gold is likely to to have reached the bottom however this is one thing where I, I wrote it to my subscribers. When you see strong volume and then you see a parabolic rise in the price, you know that this was distribution. You know people were selling heavily. And the same thing happened here. You see, when you have the, uh, the, 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 the price of the ETF hitting this line and then on top of that you have very heavy volume, then you know that there is probably an in, a very a near-term top. This is... Uh, this is a bottom following a, a decline. This high volume following a little decline. So probably that's that was could be understood as a top, a bottom like this this one here. So this you see heavy volume after a rise. The market the gold touches this uh, uh, upper channel line and and in the in the in gold corrected. So here. As I said, what I would suspect that gold might have possibly go down to this level, volume would pick up, and this would signal another bottom. Other ideas to manage risk that I found useful in the management of my money and the money of my clients is that too much diversification does not help. I know this, you hear diversification, but you have to be specific. If you want to make money, you have to know why you're investing, in what sectors, in what stocks, and why. Invest in a few positions. And focus on specific strategy and sectors. So, for instance, if it's a slow economy, I, I gave you in other videos which sectors usually are the best. Or if it is the economy strengthening, which sector you should focus on. But just have a small number of stocks or sectors. The other thing is sometimes people are disappointed and say, hey, you know, my broker is not good. The broker is not a portfolio manager. He's not paid to manage your portfolio. He's paid to give you ideas and to give you 
things to think about, but they are not money managers. Measure your performance. This to me is the most important thing to manage risk. Measure the performance of your portfolio. I do it every day, every evening. And then I check which are the stocks that went well, which are the mutual funds that performed well, which one performed poorly, why, and then I decide what is going to be my strategy, if it still is valid or not. But measuring your performance and understanding what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong and taking correcting action, corrective action is very, very important. If you see something that goes down like a rock, probably you would have to start thinking, eliminating losing position. Manage the market value of your portfolio. Is your value of the portfolio going up or down? If not, why not? Then you have to, again, eliminate the position that make you lose money right away. Don't just think about it. Do it. And then be flexible with your investment strategy. If you see the economy is strong and you believe the economy is strong and then suddenly it's, it's going to be weak, well, you have to be flexible. You have to change your strategy and change the assets that you're investing in. Thank you very much for following this uh, video and uh, I hope I gave you some ideas on managing risk, uh, trying with simple tools to recognize when the markets are going up too much or down too, too far. And uh, I have many other videos dealing with these issues on how to manage portfolio. I hope you will find them useful as well. Again, thank you very much and have a nice day. So long.